Good morning from Hungary. We arrived in the dark last night, so we didn't actually see where we were until this morning, and it looks beautiful. So much nature everywhere. Today, we're going to see something pretty special. What are we going to see, Mo? We are going to see the largest stalagmite caves in Europe. Ooh. We are Sarah and Marek. In October 2020, we left our home country of South Africa and set out to see the world using budget travel strategies to make our travels last as long as possible. From working on a traditional winery in Georgia, to a sailboat in Turkey, to attempting to hitchhike over 1,800 kilometers in four days, our budget travels have by no means been boring or uneventful. We can't wait to see what's next. So we just arrived at the cave entrance. It's literally here. Like this is the entrance. But <laughs> the information online was just a little bit wrong. We're actually quite confused and we don't really know what's happening. But they've said that we need to come back in an hour. So that'll be about half past 11. And then we can only buy tickets. So yeah, if you're planning on coming here, don't follow the information online. We'll try to find out a bit more and tell you exactly the path or the direction that you need to go. <laughs> So you may be wondering where exactly we are. So we are at the Barudla Caves, which are literally just across the border from Slovakia by a couple of kilometers. And you might be wondering why we chose to come here first rather than going to Budapest. And that's because it just made sense to come here in terms of where we were in Slovakia. But we're definitely still going to travel down through Hungary and visit that incredible city. And we definitely paid the price for that yesterday. So what is supposed to be a quick and easy 100 34 kilometers or just a couple of hours trip ended up taking us the entire day. We left at quarter past nine yesterday and only arrived at quarter past seven. And that's mainly down to two factors. Firstly, our internet was not working. And secondly, the train system in Slovakia is not difficult, but it's confusing. So our one connecting train, we got off four minutes too early. And that four minutes resulted in a four hour, hour wait. But We've made it. And it is beautiful. We've got a few minutes to spare and we've just spotted a really cool lookout point that we can go hike up to. All the way up there. <sighs> Definitely more of a walk than a hike, but the view from up here is pretty cool. One hour has passed. Let's go see if we can get those tickets. Fingers crossed. So you're gonna go buy the tickets? I'm not ready. <laughs> Why? I don't really feel like that crushing blow of being told, no, come back later. What if you don't ask, you won't know. I know, but right now we're just living in a fairy tale land. Like, yeah, it's coming soon. But if they tell us again, it's like, oh, we've already been here for an hour. <laughs> All right, I'm ready. <laughs> Off you go. <laughs> and? Success. <gasps> we have 20 minutes to wait. 20 minutes. Unfortunately, the tour is in Hungarian, so we have English information cards. Oh, great. <laughs> At least we've got the information. Yeah. Oh, also, you can only pay by credit card or in Hungarian font. Front, I believe it's called. <laughs> Everybody followed us now. Everybody's going to buy tickets as well. <laughs> so before we start on the tour, I thought we would just give you a little bit of information about it. So we are at the Achtelek National Park. And this cave system is actually 25 and a half kilometers long. We'll be covering just one kilometer of those 25 k's, and it's going to take us about an hour to do the tour. Inside the cave itself, it's about 10 degrees Celsius, and the humidity is anywhere between 95 and 98%. So it seems like everyone is moving towards the entrance of the cave. I guess it's about to start soon. But seeing that it's in Hungarian, we'll be your tour guides for the day. Please follow us. <laughs> We 
move to the back because we don't understand anything and we'd rather have less people around us. This first hall that we're in is called the Atrium and apparently they discovered 13 skeletons in here. Human skeletons. Let's not get left behind. <laughs> Oh, at the back of the group plan, he keeps turning off all the lights, so we have to move more forward. It's not so much of a tour, but it's rather more of a guided walk, almost. Especially if you can't speak the language, so we've just got our little booklets and we're walking through and looking for ourselves. The camera can't really get this one properly, but you've got a long section of these stalactites and then a bunch of water underneath, so it's a really trippy reflection. And the only way you know it's a reflection is because when the water or whatever it is drips off, then it makes these ripples in the water. It looks really cool. from that show the acoustics in here are incredible and it has rightly so been called the concert hall and they've legitly organized concerts here in the past and they do it regularly every year So this cave is called Black Cave and that's because there's like a black sediment all over the walls and that's partly because of manganese deposits running over the walls and also because prehistoric man used to be found to be living here and the walls are black from the fires that they used to make here. called Tiger Hall because of the tiger I can see up on the wall but Marek says I'm imagining things so let us know in the comments if you can also see the tiger up on that wall. We're in a place called the Hall of Collins, and this behind me right here is called the Dripstone Column, where the name for the Hall of Collins comes from. So you may be wondering, how do these things actually fall? Now, this is a process of a thing called a stalactite and a stalagmite, and these things are formed when limestone drips out of the ceiling, which forms a stalactite, and the limestone comes through the floor called a stalagmite. And once these two stalagmites and stalactites meet each other, it forms a dripstone column. So here's a very nice example of how the stalactites and the stalagmites meet each other to form a dripstone column. As you can see, the stalactites are coming down from the ceiling and the stalagmites are going up from the floor. And once they join together, it is then called a dripstone column. Literally, like, what else can I say? That was so cool. <sighs> <laughs> Genuinely feel exhausted uh, after that. That was so fast. You literally have to run from like place to place just to be able to be there in time when the lights are on because he turns it off boom, just like that. That was cool, though. It really was. <laughs> In all honesty, it was pretty difficult to get here, it was pretty difficult to keep up with the group. And it was pretty difficult to find information about this place online. But if you can look past that and get past that stuff, it definitely is worth the visit to come and see these caves. They are incredible. Honestly though, I feel a little bit overwhelmed. It was so fast and now we're outside and we can't go back inside and it was incredible while we were in there and like the emotions were overwhelming. It made me feel so small. 
but I just wish it was a bit longer and maybe a bit slower so you can really take it in properly. Overall, it was a really cool experience and it's an amazing thing to see. Now, honestly as well, if you do struggle a bit with claustrophobia, this may be a little bit of a push for you. There's nothing crazy like crawling through holes and stuff, but you do need to bend over every now and again. So it might be a little bit of a push for you. But otherwise, thank you so much for joining us today. We really hope that you enjoyed it as much as we did as well. Tomorrow we're heading out to our next place in Hungary and we are really hoping for a smoother travel Please. day. <laughs> and as always, we'll see you in the next one. Seems like it. Alright, I'm recording. It's so tempting to touch everything, but I can't. And I mustn't. And I won't.